Hello everyone, we're back with another DAS tutorial, and today we're going to look at one of my most requested topics for tutorials, which is animation. So we're going to look at a couple of animation basics today, just the very, very basics to get you started with animating your, your DAS figures. And uh, in this one, um, we're going to use a pre-done, uh, kind of a pre-purchased navigation, uh, a pre-purchased um, animation rather, just to keep things simple and show you how everything works. So I've already got my scene created and I've got my Bridget 8 figure um, already loaded into the scene. She's already dressed, everything's, uh, everything's set how I want it. Um, and we're gonna work with the animate to system. So if you look down at the bottom of the screen, um, we have the animation timeline, which is kind of the uh, the old method of doing animation, which I, I still use a lot, but then we have Animate 2, which kind of adds a little bit more power and functionality, and uh, that's the one that we're going to use today. So down at the bottom, um, I've already got some animations loaded in. Uh, these are some, I believe these came with, uh, I believe these came free with devs. Um, and if you click down there, like I've got fighting selected, but there are different uh, categories you can choose. You can do, you know, dancing, gestures, walking, you know, different stuff, but I'm going to do fighting today. Uh, so when you select your category next to that, you have a bunch of different blocks that comprise your animations. And today we're just going to use just one simple animation. So if you hover over it, it'll kind of give you a preview of the animation uh, in the pane. And one thing that you want to be careful about is that the animation matches the figure that you're using. So I'm using a Bridget 8, which is based on the Genesis 8 figure. So if you look, when I highlight this one, um, oops, it says kick a G8F. That lets you know that that one is made for a Genesis 8 figure, or I'm sorry, a Genesis 8 female figure. Um, so if I go to one to the right, this one is just kick A. This is the default kick animation, which, for a, which is for a Genesis 3, which uses a different rigging uh, method. So if you look at this one, it looks really stiff and awkward and our arms don't move because it's, it's not for the correct figure. So we're gonna go back to the kick A for G8F and I'm going to click and drag this up into my animation timeline. There we go. So now we have it up there, I can hit the play button and it'll go. So it's a little bit slow and choppy when you're when you're previewing um, because it's rendering off of the CPU. So your animation isn't going to be totally smooth, but we're going to work on that in a moment. So a couple of things. Um, I can go down here and click on this, and uh, it says double click for keyframes. And basically that shows you every frame of animation that something changes. So if a body part moves, that's called a keyframe. And so you can go just drag that arrow and go frame at a time and see everything that's happening. So if you need to make any adjustments, you can find that exact keyframe and just change things manually. So even though this is made for a Genesis 8 female figure, which we're using, some of them do have different body proportions and they may not behave 100% correctly. So you might have to go in and tweak minor things, even if you're using a prefab animation like, like we're using today. Um, you can also go back to the standard animation timeline, which is honestly what I prefer to use when tweaking things. It's what I it's what I learned with, and it's what I'm more comfortable with. Um, so I'm still kind of learning about the the animate system. But I'll go ahead and show you something cool that you can do with this. So um, as far as my lighting, by the way, um, I'm not using any special lighting. I'm just using the the default lighting that's in the scene. I believe I have my light turned on on my camera. I'm not too concerned about that right now. I just want to do the animation. Um, I've already got a camera created, uh, which I'm using right now, uh, just my regular camera. And so if you wanted to change anything about the animation, all you have to do is highlight the keyframe that you want to change and then move whatever it is you want to move and it'll automatically create a new keyframe for that object. So like, let's say um, if I play this animation, or I'm just gonna scroll through it a little bit. She, her foot's kind of off camera a little bit. So let's say I wanted to keep that on camera. I do want to start right here, but as she moves forward, I want the camera to kind of move with her. So I'm going to select, let's see, let's do frame 21. And I'm just gonna pan the camera over a little bit. There, let's see what that looks like. So now if I go back to the beginning, my camera is where we put it, and then as I scroll through that, now the camera is going to move as well until it gets to that new keyframe, and it's going to stop moving. 
and let's have her kick like right towards the camera. So when she reaches full extension, we're gonna place it to where her foot is kind of going right towards us that way, right in the middle there. There we go. So now when I play through that, I've created a new keyframe. So everything's gonna go just like it was before until we reach that keyframe there. And then it's gonna keep going and boom, kicking right at the camera. And then as she follows through and finishes with her kick, let's just kind of keep that camera panning. And we'll end it like right there. It's about 10 frames from the end. There we go. All right, let's put that back at the beginning, kind of get a preview of that. There we go. That's kind of a, that's kind of a cool thing. So we're gonna have some camera movement in there. That just adds a neat touch to it. All right. Now uh, there is a trick uh, when you get ready to render your animations, and it took me a long time to figure this out. But um, if we go to our render settings tab over here on the left, I've already got that one selected. Um, I'm, let's see. I've got it on full HD. Sometimes it'll default to old values, even though it it says the dimension preset is something different. So I'm gonna fix that. I'm just gonna select quad HD then go back to full HD and boom, now my global pixel size has changed. I'm just gonna do this at a standard 1920 by 1080 full HD resolution, no need to do 4K or anything like that, I don't think. All right, so the render type defaults to current frame. So if I rendered this right now, it would just render this zero frame, I'm on frame zero, it would render this one frame of animation and that's it. So if I click that, I've got a couple of other options. I've got image series and I have movie. So common sense tells you that you wanna render this as a movie since we're doing a video, we're doing a moving picture. However, I have had no end of problems by rendering as a movie. So whenever you render this, uh, you can select your render engine just like with a, a normal uh, still image. And you can do, you know, basic OpenGL, Intermediate OpenGL, iRay, 3D Light, you know, whatever render engine you like to use. So if I do this as iRay, it has to render every frame of this video as a separate iRay image. So if it normally takes you, um, if it normally takes you one minute to render a still frame, and this animation is 100 frames, or well, 101 technically, because we're starting on zero, it'll take you 101 minutes to render that entire video. Um, and I've, uh, I've done scenes before where I would render like a shorter animation, like 30 or 60 frames, and it would be kind of complicated. I have, have a background in there, and it would take me like a day or a day and a half, like literally 24 to 36 hours to render this whole thing. All the scenes get rendered, and then it starts to export the video, which only takes a matter of seconds, and the whole thing crashes, and I lose my entire video. This happens to me at least 50% of the time uh, whenever I'm trying to render a video. I've scoured the internet and I've tried every single workaround that I could possibly find and nothing works for that. A little more than 50% of the time, my videos will just crash uh, as, they're, as they're exporting. So I found a good workaround for that. It takes an extra couple of steps, but it's pretty easy and, and it works pretty much 100% of the time. So what we're going to do, instead of rendering as a movie, we're going to render an image series. So we're gonna export all of the images, then we're gonna combine them in Photoshop and export them as a movie. I have had 100% success doing this. So it's still gonna take the same amount of time to render your images, um, but if anything happens, if it crashes, then we're still going to save all of those frames that we've already rendered. So if it renders like 75 frames and then your computer crashes or the software crashes for whatever reason, you just have to render like the last 15 or 16. You don't have to render everything. If I do it as a movie, if anything goes wrong, then I've got to start over again from the very beginning. So we're gonna do this as an image series. We're gonna start at zero and end at 100. It should automatically uh, populate that depending on how many frames are in your, your total animation. And we're gonna do a test on this first. So we're not gonna render everything as iRay just in case we don't like something. I'm gonna do it as basic G OpenGL because that's gonna render a lot faster. It's gonna take a, just a couple of minutes instead of an hour or longer to render all 100 frames. Um, so we're gonna render it as OpenGL, and I'm gonna show you how to combine all the images, and then we're gonna do it with NVIDIA iRay to get our, our final video. So um, let me make sure I've got everything set. Okay, I've got my series path, and we're gonna hit the render button.
All right, now that we've got all our images rendered, I wanna point out one more thing. Um, under where you normally put the file name for your image, this one is called series base because it's going to number these sequentially with the, the number of, of frame that it is. So our series base is gonna be animation underscore tutorial followed by a number. So it'll be animation underscore tutorial zero zero and then zero one and zero two and so on um, all the way up to frame 100. That's gonna be really important in a moment. So let's go ahead and open Photoshop. Uh, we're going to go to File and Open. And I've already uh, got the folder there with all of our animation files. So now we have every single frame of that animation. And like I said, it's got all of our frame numbers 01, I'm sorry, 00, 01, 02, 03, all the way up to 100. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to select the very first one and then select Image Sequence. In order for this to work, your images have to be numbered sequentially. And thankfully, Daz already does that for us. So they've already got everything sequentially numbered, so we don't have to worry about it. But if I picked 46, then when I select image sequence, it will automatically look for 47, 48, 49, and so on. So we're gonna select 00, select image sequence. Just select that one image, by the way, don't select all of them, and then hit open. And it's gonna ask us for our frame rate. We're just gonna leave that at the standard 24, which is the same for movies, like for cinema. Hit OK, and there we go. That is our image series. So now if I hit play, it's gonna go a lot smoother than before because it's not rendering everything in real time. And boom, that is our image. That's our kit, got the camera pan in there and everything. And I can even drag through that and kind of go um, slowly or even frame at a time. And I recommend doing this, just check your video, make sure that there's no like texture tearing or make sure that you know her hands aren't going through her body or anything weird like that. And if any of those artifacts do occur, then we can go back into Daz and just kind of fix those uh, by hand. But it looks to me like everything is perfect. That animation works really, really well. And generally they will if you're using the prefab animations, like they really put those through their paces. All right, that's gonna do it then. All right, so in that case, um, we don't really need to, uh, actually I'll go ahead and show you how to export. We're gonna go to File, Export, and Render Video is what we're looking for. Uh, we're gonna call this animation, oops, animation underscore tutorial, and Open GL, just so we know that's the low quality one. Then hit render. This should go a lot faster. There we go, this is all real time, just takes a few seconds to export. And now, uh, if I play the video, there it is. And that actually doesn't look too bad even for Open GL, but we're about to make that look a whole lot better. All right, now let's go back to our Daz scene. And we're gonna do the exact same thing again. Uh, we're gonna re-render it, but this time we're going to select NVIDIA iRay. So like I said, every single frame now has to be rendered as a separate iRay image, which is, should take my computer about a minute or two to render each frame. Uh, um, I, I use a, um, a GTX 1080 Ti video card, which is pretty fast. I don't have any background on here or anything, but given that we have 100 frames, it's still gonna take upwards of an hour and a half. So I am not gonna record this one. I'm gonna shut off my recorder and render this, and then we're gonna come back and ex export that, uh, or I'm sorry, import that into Photoshop, export that as a video, and uh, check out our final product. So um, I will check back with you in just a moment. All right, we are back. It took my uh, full video about hour and 15 minutes to render all 100 frames. Uh, so now if I check my folder where I have everything saved, um, everything has the same name, but now everything's rendered in iRay. It looks a lot better than it did before. Could definitely use some work in the lighting, but like I said, we're working on just the animation this time. So there we go, a whole lot better than before. All right, and now all we're gonna do is follow the same steps that we did in Photoshop earlier. So I'm gonna open up Photoshop. We're gonna to go to File, Open, select our first image, click Image Sequence and Open. And 
And there it is. Everything looks great. So I'm going to go to File, Export, Render Video. animation tutorial iray render that again should take just a few seconds exactly as long as the OpenGL one and there we go so now when I go to open that up I'm using uh, VLC media player and there we go so that's now exported as an mp4 so you can import that into your uh, movie editing software if you want and treat that just like you would any other video and that will do it for this one. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me a comment if there's any, uh, any requests you'd like me to see cover in another video. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.